How come nobody plays old Terraria mods anymore? I mean, they're fully fledged out in terms of content, so why is everybody raving over other mods that have just started or aren't even complete yet? I was typing into the Googler, as one does, and noticed that Ancients Awakened, despite being one of the biggest mods in Terraria, has little to no content on it whatsoever, other than when Adrian played it. Th thank you, Adrian, for having taste. So, here and now, I've decided to become the first person to ever capture the entirety of this mod into one video. All of its weapons, all of its bosses, all of its secrets, and much, much more. Hold on to your butts, because this, this was a crazy one. I started this playthrough the same way I do with every other one, by getting wood. I also took a quick little peek at the weapons to see what I was getting myself into, and let's just say, I, I am going melee. Like, like, look at how many weapons are for melee compared to the other classes. I am going melee. I then began exploring to the left, and it dawned on me that I'm playing the same version of Terraria that I played back on, like, the Xbox 360 way back in elementary school. It was, it was crazy nostalgic. While walking, I remembered playing a modded playthrough like four years ago with a couple of friends, and back then, the Vein Miner mod could Vein Mine any block you wanted, so I gave it a shot. Okay, I'm gonna do a test really quick. He's still Vein Mine blocks. No. I continued going left until I ran into a desert where I started to mine cacti, because cactus armor is such a good early game armor, and I feel like it, it's just way too underappreciated. Like, you get three defense and infinite thorns just for spending a single minute mining cacti. While harvesting the cacti, I got attacked by a madness slime. It dropped a madness fragment that's used for some pretty fire early game gear. After my exploring, I went home and built a basic house. Super early on day 2, I got started on my elevator. I ended up getting such an early start on it because I found a desert to my left, so I figured that on my right would be the crimson, so I just decided to dig down because I wasn't going to find any caves. While mining, I came across this weird rainbow ore that I referred to as the RBG ore, and I couldn't mine it, but I'll be back for it. I got a shit ton of ore while I was down there, and to my genuine surprise, I found a shit ton of diamonds and rubies as well. Still we're set for magic storage already. That's crazy. Hmm. A lot of ruby. Man, we're finding some good shit. Once I was done mining, I came back to my house and went to go smelt some ores when I noticed that I could make a diamond saber out of the diamonds that I found that dealt 29 melee damage. 29 melee damage, so I was already super duper powerful. After all of my smelting and crafting, I began exploring to the right. While exploring, I was collecting some mushrooms for the first boss summon, the Mushroom Monarch. Just as I said earlier, I ended up running into the crimson and dying. Once I was back home, I used the Madness Fragments that I had been collecting to make the Madness Staff, a magic weapon that fires this big, colorful ball that explodes on impact. It, 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 it really sucked compared to the Diamond Saber. I finished off my day by getting started on the NPC housing. I continued making NPC housing into the morning of day 3. Since I felt significantly stronger than I felt just a few minutes ago, I continued exploring to the left, past the desert, and came across a cave that I obviously started mining in. When I got back home from all that mining, there were two new NPCs at my house. The first one was named Alpha Kip the Mudfish. He sold what looked like treasure bags from each of the modded bosses for a new currency called Ancient Coins. He also had a weapon shop that was currently empty. The other one was named Anubis the Legend Scribe. This guy told me exactly how to summon certain bosses, like where to go and what to do. I ended the day off by continuing to mine. I continued the elevator on day 4, but just until I ran into a cave so that I could get more ores. Eventually I died, but I saw a weird green glow while waiting to respawn. As cool as that seemed, I guess I wasn't that interested because instead of going back right away to investigate, I made full golden armor and then used an insta bridge to fight bosses. After making my unbelievably shitty boss arena, I summoned the Mushroom Monarch. He seemed super duper easy to defeat, but my issue is that I had pretty much no health whatsoever, so I ended up losing. Once I was done trying to defeat a boss that I obviously couldn't because of my health, I went back to check on that green glow. So after investigating, I guess at the very center of my world was a tree that seemed to be surrounded by some sort of green ore that I couldn't mine. But it, it gave me two buffs while I was down there, Dryad's Blessing and this buff, I can't remember the name of it, but it gave me no fall damage. All I did on day 5 was make magic storage in mine, but at the end of the night I was going to summon the Mushroom Monarch again and just, just, just watch this. 3, 2, 1... What the fuck, dude? I can only spawn him during the day, are you kidding me? Not only that, but it also consumed my thing. I started off day 6 by looking for mushrooms, but I instead ended up getting jumped by every night enemy that this game has to offer. All at once. Shit, there's so many. 
Things are not looking good for me right now. Oh my god, what is going on? I'm getting so overwhelmed right now. What is going on? Even now, I still don't know why there are so many enemies. And it, it's not like I adjusted anything. So, I, I, anyways, I continued my search for mushrooms and came across this biome that, when entered, is completely pitch black. Turns out that this place is called the Mire. And for some reason, no light shines here. Like, literally ever. Despite how scary it was, I continued forward and came across a tree just like the one at the center of my world, and under this tree was an almost straight drop down into some sort of lair. This, this biome seems to work exactly the same way the Crimson and the Corruption work. I say this because it's a creepy biome with a weird underground part that happens to have orbs even further underground. I tried to mine one of these orbs, but I got fucked instead. Uh, dude, why does it have so much fucking health? Oh my god, oh my god! I then went looking for mushrooms on the right side of my world, and I didn't even find a single mushroom, but I did come across another new biome, the Inferno. This place was quite literally like hell on earth. There was lava everywhere, and all of the enemies were fire related, there was a big volcano right in the middle. These enemies were also identical to the ones in the mire, like like they dropped the same stuff, they looked the same, it was, it was weird. Me being the smart fella that I am, I jumped right into the volcano, and I just fell to my death. I ended my day by stacking up into the sky, and you may be wondering, Okla, why the hell are you stacking up into the sky? And the, the answer I give you is that there is this sword that I can make with 5 stars and 200 cloud called the Cloud Striker that does 20 melee damage and shoots projectiles. Like, what, what, melee, what melee weapon shoots projectiles this, this early on? On day 7, I jumped off the tower in hopes of running into a cloud island, but the only thing I was met with was the Eye of Cthulhu and the, some slime room at the exact same time, and it just didn't end very well. He's gonna kill me now, but I'm telling you now, if there were no slimes involved in this equation, I would have been just fine. Yeah, fuck you. Afterwards, I jumped off to the right and actually found an island. Like, surprisingly, actually found an island. So, I got to mining the cloud. Once I had enough, I made the cloud striker, and it was actually pretty good. It was, it was much better than my bow. I then expanded my arena and doubled my NPC housing. I spent the rest of the day looking for mushrooms and finally found the last one that I needed as soon as I started day 8. Now that I had all the mushrooms that I needed, I waited until morning and then squashed the Mushroom Monarch. Oh, and he left. All right, and that was it. All right, that was it. That was that was easy as hell. What the hell? All right, let's go back home. That fight was way too easy, but I did get a hearty truffle, an equipable that gives me an extra fifty health. I then made the summon for the next boss, Feudal Fungus, and went down to the Mushroom Mob to build an arena. And I spent the rest of the day making that arena. I finished the arena, kind of, sort of, on day 9, but I couldn't summon the boss because while making this arena, I had completely destroyed the mushroom biome, so I planted a seed and left to let it grow. To pass the time, I defeated the mushroom monarch a couple of times and got some cool looking melee weapons, but they did no damage compared to the diamond saber. Afterwards, I went back down to check on the mushroom biome and it had gotten nowhere, like literally nowhere, so I just, I just walked away in mind. Super early on day 10, I defeated both the Eye of Cthulhu and the King Slime, but unfortunately I didn't get the Slimy Saddle, and for some reason I never seemed to get it on my first try, and I just don't know why. I then went and made more magic storage because I was getting sick and tired of having a full inventory all of the time. Once that was done, I decided to go search the Cloud Islands to find that pair of wings that's in the chest, until I came to a realization. You wanna know something really funny? I've been like, I just started searching these Cloud Islands, 
uh, for some wings because you know there are wings and wings would be cool right now. Um, and I just remember that this is 1.3. The the wings aren't even in the game right now. I went home defeated and found a new NPC. I I don't even want to pronounce the the first part. He's he's the Lovecraftian. Whatever it was, it sold nothing yet, but it gave me an extensive list of things to do. So I went to go gather some of them up, but I got interrupted by the grips of chaos. Thank you. All right. Boom. That fight, just like the last one, was way too easy. I, I Are all the bosses going to be like this? I ended up getting two new ores from this boss on day 11, Incinerite and Abyssium, and I could make some cool stuff with each of them, but I would need to get more ore. Afterwards, I went over to the Lovecrafting to give him some of the stuff that he had on his list, and he gave me nothing in return, like nothing in his shop, gave me nothing for giving him all these items, literally nothing. And I know it's bad manners to expect something in return, but like what the fuck man. Now that the sun was out and I couldn't fight the grippers anymore for more of the ores, I went underground to go check on the mushroom biome and just take a look for yourself. Shit, okay. Oh, get fucking juked bro, holy shit. What the fuck, dude? After that embarrassment, I went on a little rant about my summon. Also, this thing like looks cool and it's like a cool summon and everything, but and I get this this mod is made like fucking ages ago. But, like it doesn't move at all. It's just like it's just a like a like a singular moving PNG. There's no animation to it, and I think that's really funny. I then went all the way back to the mire to break some of those orbs, and this place is literally identical 
to the Crimson and the Corruption. Like, I got items that were just the Meyer version of them, one of them being a Shadow Band, and it increases my movement speed by 15%. Once I was done there, I went over to the Crimson to make another Gripper spawn, summoned them, and defeated them. I was going to use the ore that I got from them to start making new armor, but I realized that I need other materials that that will most likely drop from some other boss. Since I couldn't use the new ores to make armors just yet, I used some of the incinerite to make the Flaming Fury, a melee weapon forged with the kindled rage of ancient dragons. That That's just a fancy way of saying it sets enemies on fire. Afterwards, I spent some time making more NPC housing. I ended the day by getting infinite buffs of a bunch of potions because I hate just like buying them or like making them over and over again, it's just annoying. But what sucks is about this is that on Terraria 1.3, you can't just toss these potions into a piggy bank or a safe and expect them to work, so I have to keep them in my inventory at all times. I'm not gonna even bother making like a boss fight for this boss, but like a minute into day 13, I defeated the feudal fungus and got some glowing spore sacks from it. I also got an aura called glowing mushium that just, they just sucked at this point. These glowing spore sacks spread the glowing mushroom biome, which was perfect because I need to make mine bigger for the next boss fight, the Truffle Toad. I went back down to the arena to make it bigger using this new pickaxe I got from the Feudal Fungus, and it is so much faster than the golden one that I was using before. Once the arena was a bit bigger, I layered the floor with mud, used the sacks on it, and it, it didn't work, it didn't work. It may not have worked, but the biome had already grown big enough for me to take on the Truffle Toad and do to it exactly what my old neighbor Kevin used to do to frogs. Oh my god, thank god. Jesus Christ. That fight was way too close for comfort, but I just so happened to be a master at this game, so it was no big deal. Oh, also, if you're curious about what my old neighbor Kevin used to do to, like, toads and stuff, is he would take, you know, you know in the sandbox those, like, toy gardening hoes you could have with, like, the three prongs on it? He used to take those and find toads and just mush them till they were just, till they were just, like, mashed potatoes, bro. It was, it was horrible. Anyways, from the giant toad, I got a melee weapon called the Toad Tongue. It's kind of like a whip, except it pulls enemies towards me when it retracts. I also got an equipable named the Truffle Legs. They give me increased jump speed, increased jump height, and make me immune to fall damage. Once all this mushroom biome nonsense was over, I ended the day by searching for tungsten to expand my magic storage. On day 14, I went over to the Crimson, made a quick arena, and defeated the Brain of Cthulhu, and this was by far one of the easiest Brain of Cthulhu fights I've ever done. 
After it was defeated, I got a status message that read, you hear a hum of harmony from the terrarium after the defeat of a great demon. I figured this had something to do with the tree at the center of the map, so I made full crimtain armor and headed on down. Something weird was going on with the tree, like, like it was pulsing and there were enemies like defending it or something. Each of the enemies dropped terror shards that could be used to make an armor set and a sword, so I spent the rest of the night farming these enemies. On day 15, a goblin army attacked, and as soon as it arrived, all of the terror enemies just stopped spawning. It, so, so hopefully to get them to spawn again, I took care of the goblin army. Bro, this weapon works like, like, a, like a beauty. This weapon is crazy good against these guys. Oh my god, this is going to be a breeze. That was the fastest I've ever done it this early in the game. And that was crazy. Once they were out of the way, a new NPC came to live with me. Goblin Slayer, the Goblin Slayer. He, he just sells various items from each of like the various events in this game, but the catch is that there's a new certain like type of currency required for each event. I went back to the terror tree to see if enemies started spawning in, and they did, so I spent some time getting enough terror shards. After a while, I got enough to make full Biomine armor and the Harmony short sword. The arm gives me random buffs depending on the biome I'm in, and the sword is just garbage. In the end, I decided not to use either of them. I wanted to defeat the next boss, the Hydra, on day 16, but I had literally nothing to do, so I just waited until night. Once it was almost night, I went inside the mire and built a super duper quick arena and used it to slay the Hydra. Oh, okay. I didn't have to defeat the body then. Bit anticlimactic, but you do what you gotta do. Okay, so I kinda cheesed like the entire fight just a little bit, but it's it's it, it it's the Hydra's fault for getting stuck in the first place, man. How stupid you gotta be to get stuck inside of like a rock? From the Hydra, I got a bunch more Abyssium, and I got a new item called Hydra Hide, and that's the only other item that I need to start making stuff with the Abyssium. I went home on day 17 and used the Abyssium to make full depth armor, fully expecting to almost double my speed, but I was left very disappointed. Oh, what the hell? I'm not even... I equipped all of that hoping I was going to be super fast. Okay, well there is no point in using this armor then. I then figured that the Inferno was going to be the same deal, so I went over there, made a Narita, and slayed a, a, another dragon.
I was exactly right about this place being the same exact deal. All I got was a bunch of incinerate and then the new thing, which was scorched scales that is used to make all the stuff with incinerate. After all this mire and inferno nonsense, I went over to the dungeon to try and defeat the Skeletron, but the sun was rising fast, so I was rushing just, just a little bit. Oh, oh, come on, I gotta hurry. It's already almost midnight. Oh, oh, get out of here. Get out of here. Oh, oh shit. This arena's so tiny. Oh, shit. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I got stuck, dude. God damn it. I went back on day 18 and just waited for night. I lost. I lost. Fuck me, dude. Come on. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Finally. Oh my god, if I had died there, I would have been so pissed. I had finally beaten it on day 21. I, I don't know why it's always so hard for me with this boss. Like, the Skeletron is just so difficult for me. And it, it, is it just because I suck? I don't know. I've defeated all these other hard bosses. Like, I beat I beat all of Calamity, but I can't beat the Skeletron. Like, what's up with that? When it died, a bunch of status messages came through. Bones of the ancient past burst with energy. The desert winds stir, and the winter hills rumble. I looked through the dungeon really quick, but there wasn't anything new other than a skull wand. It's a summoner weapon that summons a dungeon skull, and it honestly sucks. It, it just It's just bad. Afterwards, I went home and talked to Anubis to see what to do next. He told me to go teach a thing or two to the desert jinn, so I went over to the desert to scope things out. When I got there, I noticed that there was a new enemy spawning, the jinn. I killed a couple of them, and the last one dropped a desert lamp that's used to summon the desert jinn, so I resurfaced, made a quick arena, and taught this guy a lesson. That guy did no damage. Ay, ay, ay. After defeating him, I got this sick ass Jinnerang that dealt the same damage as my Tongue Toad, but I could use it faster. I then spent some time chatting it up with Anubis to see what to do next, and he told me to go check out what's up with these snow serpents that suddenly started appearing in the tundra. I ended up spending the rest of the night walking to the tundra, and there indeed were some snow serpents. I killed one and it dropped a Sub Zero crystal that's used to summon the next boss, the Sub Zero Serpent. On day 22, I was initially going to fight the next boss, the Sub-Zero Serpent, but I could only do it at night, and it was pretty much already day, so I spent my entire day exploring the jungle to get the Anklet of Wind and to defeat the Queen Bee, just because it was bothering me that there was, like, the unchecked checkbox on my boss list. 
Once night had arrived, I started my fight with the Sub-Zero Serpent, and for some reason, I could barely hurt it at all. I had no clue what was going on, and before I knew it, it was day 23, and it just, it had despawned. I looked at the wiki to see what was up with this boss, and this, this was what I found. Alright, so after some research, I figured out that, um, uh, the only reason you can only damage the head is due to a bug in the code. Like, what the fuck? What just, what just happened? Uh, anyways, you can only like hit the snow serpent due to a bug in the code like that's on the wiki it, what is going on hold on what's going on back at home these guys are dropping like flies oh i see it just for some reason spawned over here whatever it's due to a bug in the code like it's on the wiki it's canon that it is due to a bug in the code that you can only hit its head so i wasn't gonna fight this boss at least not now i decided to move on to the next boss sagittarius I went over to Anubis to see what was up with him, but he didn't know anything past the Sub-Zero Serpent, which got me real suspicious over with him. But now that I'm in the editing process and I'm actually thinking about this, he probably didn't know anything because I didn't defeat the Sub-Zero Serpent. I remembered earlier that he'd said there are islands up in the sky to the east, so I went over to see it for myself and there actually was. It was a new biome called the Void. Up there, there were some chests filled with garbage, but right in the center was something called a strange machine that had like some some sort of a samurai or something in the middle. I, I have no clue, but it was sick as fuck. I ended up building an arena and starting the fight with my zodiac sign, Sagittarius. This strange machine gonna do anything yet? No? Looks like there's like a samurai trapped in it. All the bosses in this mod so far are unbelievably easy, 
but they take so long to defeat, it's kind of annoying. Anyways, from the fight I got a bunch of Doom Might and Sagittarius' Leg, a melee weapon that deals a grand 58 damage. I also got a Sagittarius Shield. It allows me to put up a shield every 5 minutes that lasts 5 seconds and it protects me from all damage, but I cannot attack while it's in use. This shield also dramatically increases life regeneration. On day 24, I researched a bunch of stuff that I could make with the Doomite, and I found an armor set I wanted, the Blazing Armor Set, that is a direct upgrade to the Kindled Armor Set. The only issue is that it needs Coral to be made, and after some searching, it turns out that I have no ocean on my world for Coral to generate. I don't want to explain it here, so this is what I decided to do to fix this issue. Okay, so my world doesn't have an ocean on either side, so I'm going- I, I loaded up the Chi Chi mod to grab Coral, because I can't get Coral without an ocean. Like, at all. Like, at all at all. So, um, if you think this is cheating, screw you. I then gathered the rest of the materials and made the Blazing Armor set. It increases my melee damage, damage resistance, and allows my swung weapons to set enemies ablaze. I ended the day trying to defeat the Old One's army, but I just, I just fucking couldn't. Like, I lost once, and then I tried again the next day, and still lost. After all of those embarrassing fails, I decided to finally finish my elevator. Now that I was down in hell, I got a bunch of hellstone because there were a few things I wanted to make. The flesh rend armor set, which increases my melee damage and causes a blood explosion that damages all enemies around me when I am hit. The molten lance, and the terror of rodsword. I decided to keep my Jinnerang and switch out Sagittarius' leg with the molten lance. Once all of my gear was in tip top shape, I went over to the dungeon to find the goblin tinkerer, just cause I think it's easier to find him in there, cause there's all the blue candles everyone is, there's a lot of open space for him to spawn. Eventually I found him and made Lightning Boots and the Bulwark of Chaos, which is just a combination between the Shield of Cthulhu and the Claws of Chaos that I mentioned earlier. I also replaced my pet Chromera with a pet demon that deals 45 damage. I then spent the rest of the night making the Hell Highway. I accidentally left my world open while I went to go eat, so I spent all of day 26 sitting at home except for the very very end, where I defeated the Wall of Flesh. Damn dude, these demons, these demons put in the work, I don't even gotta do anything! I don't even gotta do anything. These demons are putting in the work, bro. No, go back over there. Get back over there. No, don't lock onto these guys. Don't lock onto these guys. Lock back onto your 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 main target. Oh my god, these demons put in the work, bro. Damn. Damn, I need to put them on salary for that performance. Oh my god. With the wall flesh out of the way, I went right over to the Crimson on day 27 to break the few altars that are actually on my world. Once that was done, I began running around in hopes of finding an underground Crimson, cause I need Souls of Night for a weapon that I want to make. While looking for one, I ran into fucking Lucifer, like, like literally Lucifer. He told me to scram cause he's setting up some sort of shop. So I never ended up going back to check on his shop, but I just did some research just now as I'm editing this, and it turns out he's doing the same thing. The place that he's building is called The Pit. And it's not done, he's supposed to be a boss fight, but he's just not implemented into a boss fight yet. After that unbelievably strange encounter, I ended up giving up on finding the underground crimson because I did a bunch of research and it turns out that there's an underground version of both the mire and the inferno that can give me two different types of souls. Souls of smite for the inferno and souls of spite for the mire. Or maybe it's the other way around, I'm actually not sure. Knowing all this new information, my current plan is to get a bunch of these souls to not only make some wings, but to also make keys out of these souls and summon mimics. But before I could enact this plan, I decided to get through all the hard mode ores first. I ended up spending the entirety of day 28 getting these ores. I was still getting through these ores on day 29, and I, I really wish I had more altars on my world, because the only issue is that there were just no altars on my world. About halfway through the day, I found the underground crimson and farmed a bit to get some souls of night. I then went home and used those souls to make the Scorched Saw, a melee weapon that was kinda like a boomerang that I already had, but way slower and way less range, but it did deal 77 damage, so I used it. Once I had enough adamantite ore, I went over to the tundra to kill some ice golems, but I couldn't even kill one, which got me thinking, so far most of these melee weapons that I had, they, they've just been severely disappointing and underwhelming, so maybe I should change classes. I went home to think on it some more and decided that I should just try some other weapons out, because Maybe there's so little weapons in each of these classes because they spent more time on them and they look cooler. So I spent the rest of the night farming the Angry Nimbus. Super early on day 30, I got the Electricity Shard from those stupid ass clouds and it turned out to be way better than any weapon I've used so far. So for the moment, I'm going to try being a mage, but I may change back to melee, who knows. That's a silly question, I know I'm editing this right now, you'll just have to wait and see. Since I was going to be switching classes for now, I decided to try making the Mana Rose, but it's kind of like the Knight's Edge where I'm going to need four other weapons first. 
I started by making the mana flower. I started searching the jungle for a nature's gift, but I, I, I could not find one for the life of me. Like, I spent so long searching for this stupid-ass flower and never found it. Eventually, I just gave up and started collecting crystals to make a different weapon. On day 31, I used those crystals to make the Crystal Tome, a magic weapon that casts crystals that shatter into pieces, and I think it's pretty good. Uh, I, all I tested on was the Brand of Cthulhu, and it dealt some serious damage. I farmed the Brand of Cthulhu for a bit on day 32 and got like 18 platinum coins, so I went over to the Inferno to farm the enemies there for Souls of Smite for the rest of the day. Eventually, towards the end of the night, I reached my goal of a whopping 50 Souls of Smite and went home to use them. I used 25 of them on Magmancer Wings, which are absolutely amazing, 15 of them on the Fire Blast, which sucked, and I saved 10 of them for a boot upgrade that I'm going to be using later on. I then spent the rest of the night in the mire farming for Bog Toxin. I continued doing this on day 33, but eventually got enough to make the Death Daggers, a melee weapon that throws life-stealing daggers that inflict Hydra Toxin. I know I made a melee weapon, but I'm very torn between classes right now. I don't know whether to choose melee or mage, because mage is obviously good, but melee could get better. I, I, I just don't know. I ended the day by making the Illuminant Flail, a melee weapon that just deals a shit ton of damage. On day 34, I ultimately decided that I'm, I'm gonna stay melee, because there are a lot more weapons than any other class. Due to this, I went over to the Tundra and spent the entire day there waiting for Ice Columns to spawn, so that I could get their Frost Cores and make Frost Burn Armor. I chose to spawn the Destroyer on day 35 just to see what I could do, and it was honestly a really, really bad mistake. Afterwards, I went back to the Inferno to get a bunch of Souls of Smite in order to make a Key of Smite to spawn an Inferno Mimic, in hopes of it dropping the Sun Halberd. But I did this for the entire day and only got this ornate band that gives me 50 health. I equipped this in place with my hearty truffle, which if you remember does the exact same thing. When night arrived I summoned the twins and fought them all the way into day 36, but I lost. Fuck dude, god damn it. Oh my god, dude, are you kidding me? Oh my god, these weapons suck, dude. They're so bad. After that embarrassing loss, I did some research on some other melee weapons and came across the Flesh Claymore and the Dragon Fang. I couldn't make the Dragon Fang without Souls of Might, so I just gathered all the other parts that were needed to make it, and making the Flesh Claymore was exactly like making the Knight's Edge, so I made it and it turned out to be mid. Once night arrived, I fought the twins again and actually beat them on day 37. I then spent the morning just reforging all of my gear to pretty much double my defense. Once that was done, I farmed the King's Slime for just a bit just to actually make sure that the Slimy Saddle doesn't exist yet, and it turns out that it does. It, it does in fact exist, I, I just got unbelievably unlucky. I spent the rest of the night farming for Souls of Night. I split Day 38 into three parts. I spent the first part of Day 38 farming for Souls of Light, the second part of Day 38 farming for Souls of Smite, and the third part of the day defeating the Destroyer. Absolutely fucking mowing him down, dude. Oh my goodness. Absolutely mowed him down. That was crazy. Get out of here. That was crazy. That was nuts. What is this? A carrot. While I was farming for Souls of Smite in the mire, I ran into some sort of ethereal entity. What, what, the, what the hell was that? Who the hell was that guy? Who the hell was that guy? On day 39, I started making the only weapon available for the mechanical bosses, the Dragon Fang, but I was missing one component, snow mana, and the only way to get this was... The only thing was... The only way to get this was to fight the Sub-Zero Serpent. After fighting the Sub-Zero Serpent and watching it despawn for no reason whatsoever, what the hell, I had everything that I needed to make the Dragon Fang. As I was about to make it, I noticed that the snow mana makes two other melee weapons, and all of these weapons can be consistently upgraded throughout the entirety of the game. So I quickly made the Dragon Fang and spent the rest of the day getting their required materials for like the other weapons. Once night had arrived, I took down the Skeletron Prime with ease. With the mechanical bosses out of the way, my good friend Anubis wanted to talk to me about something. I met up with him in town and he told me that he wants to test my might whenever I'm ready. Honestly, I have no clue what I did on day 40. All of the footage that I have recorded is just me wandering around the entire map for no apparent reason whatsoever. The only thing that, that that does make sense is that once night came, I made the Demon Gauntlet, which gives me 14% increased melee damage, 10% increased melee speed, increased melee knockback, melee attacks inflict a different debuff depending on my world's evil, and inflicts Icor in the Crimson Worlds, so I guess the day turned out to be pretty alright. I spent the entirety of day 41 farming turtles for their shells so that I can make turtle armor, but I, I didn't make it because I didn't have enough chlorophyte. 
The next day, I upgraded my Spectre boots to the Dragon Stride boots. All it does is make me faster and allows me to stick to walls. At this point, I felt sufficiently ready to take on Anubis Legend Scribe. I defeated the only friend I've ever had in this world, and I feel good. From Mr. Legend Scribe, I got the Sentry of the Eye, a summoner weapon that obviously summons an eye sentry. I also got the Artifact of Judgment, an equipable that charges up when I take damage, and once it reaches a charge of 250, an Eye of Judgment is summoned to defend me. I did a bit of research to see what melee weapon I could have gotten, and I could have gotten the Judgment. I spent a bit of time making it, and I never actually used it. I finally remembered to make Turtle Armor on Day 43. With my turtle armor made, I was finally ready to fight the Plantera, so I spent the entire day making an arena in the jungle for it. I defeated the Plantera the next day, and let's just say I, I, I was not very happy. Dude, sometimes I hate Terraria so much. I just spent like the last 20 minutes making a Plantera arena to defeat the Plantera in 5 seconds. I got literally nothing good from this fight, but there was a status message that read Ancient Constructs Awaken in a place long forgotten. Now I had no clue where this was. I went and checked the Terra Tree or whatever it's called, but nothing new would happen there, so I, I I don't know. I spent the rest of the day fighting the enemies in the Eclipse to get broken hero swords. I forgot to hit record for day 45, but all that happened was I struggled immensely with the Golem fight because the altar thing had spawned in like a weird place where the Golem couldn't move after it was summoned, and once I got him to a low enough health, he would start shooting his lasers at me, and he was just stuck and it, 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 was, it was just annoying. Oh, on this day I also made the true Fleshrend Claymore and the true Copper Short Sword using the Broken Hero Swords that I got from the Eclipse. The true Fleshrend Claymore was pretty shit, and the true Copper Short Sword... sword sh the true copper short sword was too overpowered, so I just stopped using them both. On day 46, I made beetle armor. Later on in the day, I asked Anubis about the next boss, and he told me that there are some loud ass harpies up on a sky palace to the east, so I went over to check it out. After a little bit of looking, I found this sick ass sky palace that was just swarming with harpies and seraphs. Once I killed a handful of them, the goddess of bullshit, Athena, came to teach me a lesson.
no, Nathan. Nathan, I'm, I'm, I'm almost there. <laughs> Nathan, I'm almost there. Oh. I'm at 32 health. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I know I use the true copper short sword for this fight, but it's only because all of my weapons suck. Anyways, from Athena, I got a Seraph Harp, an equipable that summons a Seraph. I also got a bunch of Goddess Feathers that I turned into the Sky Cutter Copus, a melee weapon that shoots out homing feathers. I, I think? I honestly don't know what it shoots. On day 47, I remembered that I had a couple of summons that could be upgraded with Hero Relics, which are made from Broken Hero Swords. So I summoned the Solar Eclipse, got a Broken Hero Sword, and converted the sword into two Hero Relics, and made both the Devil Staff and the True Hollow Staff. And funny enough, both of these upgrades were worse than the original. Afterwards, I went back to my good old pal Anubis and asked him about the next boss, and he said that there's a huge horde of treasure guarded by an angry worm, but the location is unknown, so I got to looking. By the end of the day, I had finally found the worm's lair, and this place was loaded with chests, and those chests were loaded with golden shit. But there were worms coming up from literally everywhere. I got some keys from killing all these worms, and I opened a couple of chests and stole all of their loot from them. But after I opened up the third one, I was met face to face with the worm that guards this lair.
It took me six fucking minutes to defeat this boss, and it was the easiest fight of my life. Like, I took, like, no damage whatsoever throughout this entire fight. I pretty much- I, it, it, it was crazy. And again, the only reason it took so long was because my weapons just fucking suck. I got nothing worthwhile from that fight, so I went home and asked Anubis about the next boss. He told me to be careful of killing bunnies because there was some sort of entity that guards them. And I was originally going to summon this boss, like, naturally, but the way to summon it naturally is by killing 100 bunnies. So I obviously made it summon and tried to fight it, but I got absolutely rolled. I obviously wasn't ready for this fight whatsoever, so I spent the rest of the day and almost all of day 49 making weapons that sucked just as much as the last one. At this point there was only one weapon left for me to make and I had all of the materials to make it other than a Muramasa and let's just say I was already at my wits end with weapons and now I have to go farm dungeon enemies for gold keys just for a chance at getting the sword. I ended up spending the rest of the day, the entire next day, the entire next day, and the morning of day 52 farming enemies in hopes of getting a golden key and every single time I got one and I would open a chest and get everything other than the Muramasa. I literally opened up every single goddamn chest on my on my world and didn't get it. So I ended up making a new world, defeated the Skeletron, and I shit you not, the first chest that I opened had a Muramasa in it. I'm glad I have it, but I am so fucking pissed. And after all my hard work, this weapon turned out to be true melee. So it's, it's, pre it's pretty much useless. I figured that in order to defeat this rabbit, I was just going to have to get good at this game. So I stretched the shit out of my arena and pulled this stupid ass rabbit right out of its fucking hat. Jesus. Damn, that was close. Jesus. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Oh man, that was that was a scary one. I got some crazy good loot from this boss. I got Raha Rabbit Sash of Vengeance, an equipable that gives me 8% increased damage for every 10% of health that I lose, 40% increased movement speed, and greatly increased jump height. I was also able to make the Hopping Hoodlum armor set. It's a melee slash summoner armor build set thing, and let's just say I was I was literally as fast as a rabbit. I talked to Anubis and he he refused to believe that I bested a Raha Rabbit and said nothing else to me. So I just moved on to the Lunatic Cultist and mopped the floor with him, like, like he stood no chance whatsoever. 
I then spent the rest of the day taking down towers. I spent the entirety of day 54 taking down the rest of the towers, making a daybreak, and building an asphalt path. Also that on day 55, I could beat the Moon Lord on the first try. The first try, I usually never beat him on the first try. After the fight, a status message popped up that read, The Ancients have awakened. <laughs> and I know I'm supposed to be worried and all, but like all I can think about is how funny it is when actors in TV shows and movies are given a line where they have to say the title of the show or said movie. It's so funny. It turns out that there's nothing for me to make weapon-wise out of Luminite, but thankfully Ancients Awakened ensures that I won't have to fight the Moon Lord again by allowing Luminite to grow underground, just like the Hollow War. It, it was awesome. I used the absurd amount of Luminite that I had to make Solar Flare armor. With everything said and done, I talked to Anubis and he said he wanted a rematch to ensure that I was ready for what lies ahead, but I think he's just salty after his last loss. I went over to the desert to defeat him again and nothing went according to plan. Oh shit, that wasn't it. Oh no, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Oh my god. After my embarrassing loss, I attempted to fight him again, and again, and again, and I would either lose or he would despawn because I left the biome. It was, it was very frustrating. To fix this issue, I simply demolished the entire desert to make an arena that would actually fit inside of it. Once the construction of the arena was complete on day 56, I gave Anubis his final rematch.
Yes, dude. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, that was that was a rough fight. That was a rough fight. That fight was definitely the most difficult thus far. I just I just hated how he kept teleporting right on top of me. As I was about to sift through my Anubis loot, a Sarah started yapping in my ear talking about how both Athena and Greed also wanted a rematch. I, I guess a lot of bosses in this mod just can't accept defeat. I sifted through my Anubis loot and ended up with three new weapons, the Verdict, the Soul Splitter, and the Horus's Cane. He also gave me a Worm Idol, but he said that it's for later. I tested out all three weapons on like 50 brains of Cthulhu and the Soul Splitter came, came out on top, it was a clear winner. I ended the day attempted to defeat Athena again, and she had gotten hard. I spent just about all of day 57 losing to Athena over and over and over again, but eventually towards the end of the night, I was finally able to Kratos her ass. Finally, oh my god. Thank god you didn't just run a fucking way again. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why can't you win? You're loser. Oh my god. I'm gonna have to fight you again? Screw you. Screw you, Athena. I don't give a shit. Stay safe. Okay, you know what? Never mind. You're, you're pretty cool. You're right. She dropped this weird ass item called the star chart that had literally no use other than to make a music box, which I thought was really weird. I also ended up getting a bunch of sky crystals which I converted into storm spheres in order to make the Olympia. Unfortunately it wasn't the shotgun, but it was a melee weapon that shot homing projectiles, so I guess it's alright. The hopefully final rematch was with Greed, so I went down to his lair, opened another chest, and he was much stronger than before.
Boom. First try. Ugh, despite his strength, I was able to defeat him on the first try. No big deal, no big deal. He dropped a weird-ass item as well, called the Gravity Sphere, that was only used to make a music box, just like Athena's weird item, but other than that, I got nothing good from him. Later, Anubis told me that the next bosses were more worm fights, but neither him nor the Beastiary told me how to summon them. After a bit of research, I found out that the three wacky items I got from each of those rematches are to be used as parts of the next boss summon at this weird place at the top left of the world, so I grabbed all the parts and headed over there. Whoa. This thing is sick. This thing is sick. Okay, so I... Take the worm idol? No, here, I'll put him in like this. So I'm assuming... Oh, bing. Bang. Boom. Once I got home, I summoned Daybringer and Nightcrawler, and they fucked up my day cycle. What the hell? The time of day is just changing like crazy? Well, that's gonna be real inconvenient when it comes to making this video of mine. I didn't even know what day it was anymore, but I kept trying to fight them and kept on losing. These bosses seem somewhat buggy like the Sub-Zero Serpent, because my damage just wasn't rendering half the time like it should have been. Eventually, after an unknown number of days had passed, I had my final tango with the Inquinox Worms.
gift of the Celestials sparkle in the atmosphere. After the fight, I got a status message that read, The gift of the Celestials sparkle in the atmosphere. And as soon as I read that, I stopped my recording to see how many days had passed, and fucking 18 days had passed during that fight. 18 days! I lost, I lost 18 days of my entire playthrough. I had pretty much lost all of my time in this playthrough, but I, I persevered regardless by going up to the atmosphere and mining the new ore, Dark Matter. It was a new day, and I was going to try and forget about the fact that I lost 18 days in just a couple of minutes. I used the new Dark Matter ore to make Dark Matter armor, Dark Matter wings, Reality Shredders, the Dark Matter Slasher, and the Dark Matter Spin Blade. Once this was all made, I figured out that during the day, all the Dark Matter in the atmosphere turns into Radium, so I made Radium Armor, Radium Wings, and the Breaking Dawn. I'm not going to count these as days, but I tested out everything on Daybringer and Nightcrawler, and some weird shit kept on happening with like the, the, some of these weapons. What? Even now, while editing this, I still don't understand why this was happening, but it seemed kind of like cheating, so I decided not to use the Reality Shredders anymore. In the end, I chose to use the Radium Armor because I dealt much more damage for a small decrease in defense, and I chose to stick with the Dark Matter Slasher because it was very, very strong. I spent the morning of Day 77 gathering up all of the materials needed to make the next boss spawn, the Flames of Anarchy. Once I had everything, I ran into an issue. That issue being the fact that I needed an auto hammer to make this boss spawn. I went and made a little surface mushroom biome right away and started thinking about what else I could do while I waited for this biome to grow. To fill the time I did a bunch of random stuff, like I made a biome prism to see what it would do and it turns out that it does absolutely nothing. I extended the surface mushroom biome because I thought that it might be too small. I even checked out all the cool weapons in the mudfish's shop and pondered on where the hell I could get some ancient coins. All in all, I pretty much wasted an entire day. I did a little bit of research on Day78 and found out that there are these Chaos Prisms that have a 1% chance to drop from any enemy in either of the Chaos Biomes, that being the Mire or the Inferno, so I went over to the Mire to farm some of the enemies. Once I had a handful of these Chaos Prisms, I went home to see what they were used for and it turns out that they are used as a component to upgrade some weapons that I completely forgot about, like the Raider Lance and the Yogan. I upgraded the Raider Lance to the Chaos Yari and the Yogan to the Chaos Chain. They both sucked, but they are used for later weapons, so I thought it was like an alright use of my time. By the end of the day, I had gotten an auto hammer and summoned the Sisters of Discord. They mopped the floor with my ass like the Dark Matter Slasher was obviously the wrong weapon to use. I tried to fight them with the Void, and that didn't work either, so I tried to fight them with the Reality Shredders, but the weapon seemed to have fixed itself and it was now completely useless. On day 79, I ultimately ended up switching back to the Soul Splitter, and it worked much better, but I still kept on losing. Eventually, I had memorized their moves, bettered my own skills, and fought these sisters for the final time.
stop. Don't fuck up now, bro. That one, bro, is at eight, 2,000 health. Thank you. Looking back at this now, it didn't take me that many tries to defeat the Sisters of Discord, but when I was playing, it felt a lot longer. Like, I thought this boss had, take, had taken up like an hour or two of my time. Anyways, after they were defeated, a status message popped up that read, Chaotic energy grows in the deepest parts of the world. From the Sisters, I got a Heart of Sorrow, an equipable that increases both melee and ranged attacks as I lose health. Both melee and ranged attacks inflict Hydrotoxin, doubles my speed when below two-thirds of my health, and when I'm below one-third of my health, melee and ranged attacks inflict Moon Rays instead of Hydrotoxin. All the other stuff that I got didn't pertain to my class, so I just never used it. Once I was done sifting through my loot, I went underground to check out all the chaotic energy that grows down here now, and I found two new ores, Daybreak Incinerate Ore and Event Tide Abyssium Ore. Afterwards, I spent a good chunk of time figuring out what I can make before the next boss, and it turns out that the only new stuff I get before the next fight is dropped from the Sisters of Discord, so I spent the rest of the night farming them. This farming continued for the entirety of Day 80 and half of Day 81. Once I was completely done with the Sisters of Discord, I had gotten Midnight Assassin Armor, which was a dual class between melee and ranged, and I had gotten a sick-ass ranged knife named the Abyssal Kunai that I decided I was going to use for a little bit. After all this sister nonsense, I went and talked to Anubis to see what was next, and it turns out I'm only going to dive deeper into this family. The next boss was Akuma, the father of Ashkuma, which, if you noticed, is one of the Sisters of Discord. So I went over to the Inferno and spent the rest of the night making a big ass arena. I finished making the arena on day 82 and then realized that it was a huge waste of time because I could only spawn Akuma above ground. I went above ground, summoned this guy, and I actually thought this fight was a joke, but judging from my tone of voice, it obviously wasn't. That was it? Really? That was really it? Oh. No, okay. Thank god that wasn't it. I got so close to defeating him on my first try, but now I knew this boss would be pretty easy. I was wrong, because I failed over and over and over. After a while of losing and forgetting what day it is, I finally got lucky enough to beat off someone's daddy.
god. Oh. Damn. What the hell is this? Oh my god. Fuck Oni, and fuck his daughter too. I hate them both. But I'll give Oni props for not complaining after he lost. If only he could steal that into his kid. Anyways, I ended up getting the Morning Glory, a melee weapon that shoots out four phantom piercing spears, and it was it was awesome. I also got the, and I'm sorry if I pronounce this wrong, because I know this is a different language. I'm pretty sure it's Chinese. Don't kill me if it's not. I'm sorry. I got the Taeyang Baole, an equipable that's basically just a better version of the Bulwark of Chaos. I also got a handful of Crucible Scales, and they are used to make a whole arsenal of new shit. Once I was done looking through all of my loot and all of the things I could make, I spent the rest of the day getting materials to make Daybreak Incinerate Bars and Eventide Abyssian Bars. I then used all those bars on Day 85 to make a lot of stuff. I made Draconian Sun Armor, the Reign of Fire, another Morning Glory on accident, a Dragon Shiv, and a handful of Grand Healing Potions that heal 400 health, which, which is absolutely insane. The Rain of Fire seemed really cool, but its use wasn't very practical since it's significantly easier to shoot at a boss and not have to calculate where a meteor is going to land on the boss. The Dragon Shiv works exactly the same as a Copper Short Sword, except it does over 2000 damage. And the Draconian Sun Armor gives me a lot of defense, as well as melee damage. Oh, and before I forget, I thought I would look way more badass if I made the corresponding pair of wings with all the Crucible Scales, so I did that as well. I moved on to the next boss, Yamata, on day 86. In order to summon him, I was going to have to make another sigil, so I think it's safe to say that I'll be defeating the father of the other sister. I made the Dread Moon sigil right away and went over to the mire to fight Yamata, but I don't know if it was me or something else, but this first phase of the fight was taking way too long. Like, it took me 3 minutes to only get about halfway through the first phase, and I can only fight this boss at night. I went over to the Inferno to fight Oni some more to see if there was anything better I could use against Yamata, but the only thing I got out of this was losing an entire night due to Oni fucking skipping it. Like, I could have spent that night fighting Yamata. Despite not getting anything out of it, I kept fighting Oni until nighttime just because I had nothing better to do. Once I had arrived, I took on Yamata and lost to the second phase. I spent the entire day portion of Day 88 gathering up a whole bunch of life fruit because I, I legitimately totally forgot that it was a thing in this game. Once nighttime arrived, I took on Yamata for the final time. Boom, look at that. Damn, that was so much easier with this weapon. Oh my god. Nice. This fight turned out to be much easier than I thought, because in the second phase, all you have to do is focus on the head in the middle, and just try not to die. From Yamata, I got the, and again, I'm sorry about the pronunciation, I got the Amino Maraka, a melee weapon that's used to defeat the multi-headed monstrosities of the Abyss. And it was amazing. I also got a handful of Dread Scales that are used exactly like the Crucible Scales. I spent the rest of the day gathering up materials to make the next boss summon, the Doomsday Tesseract. On day 90, I went back to the Void and used the Doomsday Tesseract to destroy that weird ass machine.
Boom. There we go. Yes, dude. I'm so fucking good at this game. This was a very stressful fight, and I kind of feel like I cheesed some parts of it, but honestly, that's perfectly okay with me. With the strange machine being defeated, a new ore called Doomstone was now able to be mined in the void, so I made sure to get a whole bunch of that. I used this ore to make the Event Horizon and the Rift Shredder. I wasn't able to determine if they were good or not, so I got on with the preparation for the next boss. It's Raha Rabbit again, but I guess it's stronger now. I made the 10 carat carat right away and summoned him, but this fucker had 1.9 million health! Ultimately, I made the obvious decision and decided that I was going to defeat the final boss of this mod beforehand. So I made the Chaos Sigil. It's used to summon the final boss, the Shen Dragon. On day 91, I began my first of many attempts at defeating the Shen Dragon. But it was hard, dude. It was so hard. This also happens to be another boss that fucks with time. I was fully prepared for this boss, so there wasn't much I could do other than fight it over and over again until I won. During all these fights, I learned that the Shen Dragon is literally Oni and Yamata combined. Like, they took those two fathers and just smushed them together. At some point, I also made the Terror Staff. It's a summoner weapon that summons a Terror Wizard. I, I don't think they did much, but they, they were there. It took a long ass time and a, a, lot of lo a lot of losses, but eventually I began my final fight with the Shen Dragon.
Oh, oh my god. Christ almighty. Oh. Oh my god. This was an insanely hard boss fight. Like, like, completely insanely hard. But also one of the most beautiful and intricate boss fights I've ever done in this game. Since this boss messed with time so much, I just considered all of that to be 5 days. Like, the entirety of fighting that boss was just 5 days long. So now we're on day 96. At this point, I had technically beaten the game, so there wasn't left- there wasn't much left to do. I spent the last 4 days pretty much just fucking around with different endgame weapons since there are actually TOO many of them. But after a lot of deciding, I stuck with the true Terror Blade because it did a shit ton of damage and shot homing projectiles. I ended up using this weapon to defeat Raha Rabbit no problem, and he had some heartfelt things to say about his defeat. Oh, oh my goodness, just barely won. What do you gotta say, what do you gotta say big buddy boy? In the end, I became the new protector of this world, and despite picking fights with all sorts of gods and deities, we all became friends in the end.